All right. I think we'll begin with you, Ms. Sandelow. Go right ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, Chairman Gray, members of the Council. My name is Judith Sandelow. I'm the Executive Director of the Children's Law Center and a proud resident of the District of Columbia. Today I'm testifying on behalf of the Children's Law Center, which is the largest nonprofit legal services organization in the District of Columbia and the only such organization devoted to a full spectrum of children's issues. Every year we represent 1,200 low-income children and families, focusing on children who have been abused and neglected and children with special health and education needs. The majority of the children we represent are enrolled in the District of Columbia Public Schools, and a large percentage of them have disabilities which make them eligible for special education. DC's, uh, DCPS's proposed FY11 budget is extremely complicated, and the change in accounting categories and the significant differences between the FY10 approved budget, the reallocated budget, make it difficult on first read to follow the changes. I want to publicly thank Dr. Nian Corey and his staff for assisting me in trying to understand some of the changes in funding for special education. Um, I really want to focus my testimony very briefly on special education and on specific programs for at-risk youth. Um, I'm extremely pleased that the mayor's proposed budget largely seems to protect these programs and continues investments in special education and early identification. Um, if I can make one point, it's that in order to bring our kids back from non-public schools into local schools and integrate them more fully and more ad adequately with regular education students, we need to invest significantly in our local schools. We need to be able to put money now into those special education programs. It's going to save the DC public schools money from their non-public and transportation budgets. It's also going to save us the money of those kids who would otherwise go into foster care, into the juvenile justice system, and as adults into homelessness and incarceration. So money spent here is simply money we can take out of the Department of Corrections budget and use to educate our students. It is unclear from the budget um, exactly whether programs are being protected or whether they're being a little bit reduced. I have some details in my written testimony. I'd ask the council to make sure that you understand um, where the special education dollars have moved. And it's our general sense that they've been protected, but we would ask that you work with uh, the council, um, Chancellor Rees' office to make sure that that is accurate. I also want to just briefly highlight our concern that there is some cut in funding for at-risk students, specifically the stay programs and vocational education programs. Many students uh, who get disengaged from school are brought back to school by these programs, and it allows them to get the skills they need to move on in life. Um, and we would ask that you make sure that those are protected as well. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you.